and there will be four free response questions on the AP exam. In this video, we will do a problem modeled after FRQ3. Let's pretend it's from the 2018 AP exam. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The figure shows a merry-go-round on level ground with fence to its right. The merry-go-round rotates in a counterclockwise direction and completes one rotation every three seconds. Point B is on the edge of the merry-go-round and is located at the furthest part of the merry-go-round from the fence at time t equals zero seconds, as indicated in the figure. Point B is four feet from the center of the merry-go-round. The center of the merry-go-round is 10 feet from the fence. As the merry-go-round rotates at a constant speed, the distance between B and the fence periodically decreases and increases. The periodic function h models the distance between point B and the fence in feet as a function of time in seconds. Part A. The graph of H and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, F, G, J, K, and P, are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates, T, H of T, for the five points F, G, J, K, and P. H is the distance between point B and the fence. At time T equals zero, point B is at its furthest distance from the fence. Point F is at a maximum value of H. That's the maximum distance from the fence. So let's call this time T equals zero. The center of the merry-go-round is 10 feet from the fence. The midline of the graph corresponds to the distance from the center of the merry-go-round to the fence. Point B will sometimes be farther away than this and sometimes closer than this. Point B is four feet from the center of the merry-go-round. So at its maximum distance, point B will be four feet further away from the fence than the midline. So that's 10 feet plus the extra four feet for a total of 14 feet maximum distance of point B. Let's put a 14 on the vertical scale to indicate that this is the maximum distance of point B from the fence. At its minimum distance, point B will be four feet closer than the midline. That's 10 minus four, which is six. So the six right here will indicate the closest distance to the fence of point B. We are told that the merry-go-round completes one rotation every three seconds. So point B starts at time t equals zero at its maximum distance from the fence. But it will rotate all the way around and return back to this furthest distance three seconds later at time t equals three. On the graph, point B begins at its furthest distance from the fence at time t equals zero. As it rotates, it gets closer to the fence and then further away again, eventually returning to the furthest distance again three seconds later after one full rotation. So this is time t equals three. Halfway between the zero and the three will be t equals 1.5. Uh, you know what, I think I will use fractions. Half of three seconds is three over two seconds. And then half of three over two is three over four seconds. We can use this first value after zero to find any missing values because this is one three over four. The next value is two three over four. And the missing value is three three over four. Three times three over four is nine fourths. Now we have the input coordinates and the output coordinates for all five points. Point F is at zero comma 14. Point G is at three fourths comma 10. Point J is at three halves comma six. Point K is at nine fourths comma 10. And point P is at three comma 14. And that's it for part A. Part B, the function H can be written in the form H of T equals a times sine of b times t plus c plus d. 
find the values of constants a, b, c, and d. I want you to memorize what the parent functions look like for the graphs of y equals sine t and y equals cosine t. Notice that for cosine, at t equals zero, the value is at its highest, whereas for sine t, at t equals zero, the value is at the midline. H of t is the image of sine t after four transformations that correspond to the values of a, b, c, and d. So let's create an expression for h of t, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go. The a value is called the amplitude, and it reflects a vertical dilation of the parent function. On the parent function, the distance from the midline to the maximum value is one unit. On the graph of h of t, the distance from the midline to the maximum value is four units. This is a vertical dilation by a factor of four. Therefore, the a value is four. I'm going to skip the b value for now and come back to it. Let's move on to the c value. That's a horizontal translation of the parent function. Notice that one period of the parent function begins at zero. Here's one period of h of t. Notice that it does not begin at zero. It's shifted to the left. So how much is this graph shifted to the left? These key values are all equally spaced. So if this point is three-fourths to the right, then this point will be three-fourths to the left at t equals negative 3 over 4. This is a horizontal translation by negative 3 fourths compared to the parent function. In unit 1, we learned that this will show up in the equation as the opposite value. So we have t plus 3 fourths right here. And this is the value of c. A minute ago, I mentioned that this vertical dilation was called the amplitude. So here's another vocabulary word for you. In the context of periodic functions, we don't say that there was a horizontal translation by negative three-fourths. Instead, we say there is a phase shift of negative three-fourths. The d value is the vertical translation compared to the parent function. Notice that the midline of the parent function is at zero. The fact that the midline of h of t is at 10 means that there is a vertical translation by 10 compared to the parent function. So that is the value of d. Finally, to find the value of b, I need you to memorize this b value formula. b is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. The period is the duration of one full cycle. In this case, it takes three seconds for the merry-go-round to complete one full revolution. So that's the period. So the b value is going to equal two pi divided by three. So let's fill in the two pi over three right here. And that's it. We have now found the value of a, b, c, and d. On the AP exam, you will be given an answer box like this. So you are welcome to use it to record your values of A, B, C, and D. However, you are not required to use the answer box. You may leave it blank and record your answer as an expression for H of T with the values of A, B, C, and D filled in like this. Part C, refer to the graph of H in part A. The T coordinate of F is T1 and the T coordinate of G is t2. So here is t1 and here's t2. C part 1. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? Is h positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? h is clearly decreasing on this interval. The graph of h is falling as we move from left to right from t1 to t2. We have narrowed it down to either b or d. But is h positive or negative on this interval? h of t has a minimum value 
of 6. So h of t is always positive. So the answer is b. h is positive and decreasing on this interval. See part 2. Describe how the rate of change of h is changing on the interval from t1 to t2. In unit 1, we learn that wherever h of t is concave up, the rate of change is increasing. And wherever h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. On the interval from t1 to t2, h of t is concave down. Therefore, the rate of change is decreasing. Since they didn't ask us to explain our reasoning, it's actually safest to answer with a single word. Just say decreasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.